Hello, beautiful people. Welcome back. Passports and taxes. From what's been observed, starting from about 2015, there seemed to have been a rush of people applying for passport as a quote, non-citizen national. That's not a bad thing. But the thing is, once information is revealed to people, oftentimes seven out of 10 people who jump on a bandwagon of that information do it for the wrong reasons. And because they do it for the wrong reason, they end up arbitrarily creating records that warrant certain response on the part of those agencies that people are interfacing with. It's always said in here ever so often that before you begin to do something, know about it, know the intricacies. That's why these languages of these bodies of instruments are read, explained, and made reference to, and broken down. You might have heard someone tell you in the past to do the nonsense and national, regardless of whether it's regarding the, of the United States or not. You might have heard of it. So much so that there are now many charlatans, like an offshoot, who tell you, once you get that, you get your case dismissed, so and so. That is the issue. That is the issue because one, people don't have prerequisite knowledge of what they're trying to apply it to. And two, if it did work the exact same way that whoever it is promised you, that was the exception during the beginning stages. And the response changes because information evolves every 18 months. It's a natural law when it comes to cybernetics and information one of those issues is the issue of bandwagoning that I that is ever so spoken of on here quite often I'll show you the downside to people jumping into bandwagon of things like the national passport the first wave of people starting to do the whole non-citizen national thing was around 2015. And here's the response for you. Because they figured most people are trying to, quote, free themselves. And whether one accepts it or comprehends it or not, everything is taxation. Anything coming out of your pocket. Some of that has been went over here on YouTube, but more of it on the Patreon page. But because everything coming out of your pocket is taxation, there's a million ways to come at you through it. And many people who are looking for a quick, easy way out, which is understandable, have attempted to evade tax by trying to do this non-citizen national thing. Did you know previously, before 2015, because you know they update the forms, on the explanation and the instruction section of that passport form, there didn't used to be a, a prerequisite for warrants. They made loose reference to it, but they did not stipulate it succinctly. But after a while, they stipulated it succinctly. But then later around 2015, same thing was changed when it comes to the language of the stipulation of the requirement of pa passports, no matter what type. That stipulation is regarding taxation. And that perfectly aligns with this thing called Public Law 114-94. December 4, 2015. Fixing America's Surface Transportation Act. The FAST Act. 
the summary of it is basically if you owe any amount of tax above a specific amount you will be denied passport just as much as if you have an active warrant then you're a flight risk you will be denied warrant did you know in the past those two stipulations did not exist but because a lot of people listen to charlatans or because they themselves just want to take quick advantage of things without taking self-responsibility they are slowly but surely screwing it up for everyone else the substance here is take responsibility don't try to use one process or the other as an excuse to run away have a spine stand up and don't just randomly listen to anyone who sounds good or sounds smart telling you something it will screw you over these are the truths that no one is gonna tell you if it makes you feel uncomfortable good it should when it comes to taxation and its stipulations This is the body of public law that created it, which basically says if anyone owes more than 50K, they must be denied passport, regardless of what type of passport application. And it's in section 32101. Title 32, Offsets, Subtitle A, Tax Provision. By the way, once more, this is Public Law 114-94, December 4, 2015. A, in general, if the Secretary receives certification by the Commissioner of the Internal Revenue that an individual has a seriously delinquent tax debt not just any tax debt that's delinquent seriously these words that they're using have specific reasons and it's codified in 26 usc 7345 if the secretary receives certification by the commissioner of internal revenue that an individual has a serious delinquent tax debt. The secretary shall transmit such certification. Then and now there's a piece of paper that's certifying that is status of someone who is applying. So when you when you do the whole non citizen national passport, some will tell you put zero in the social security or not. You know the reason why they're now demanding that you do give them that social security before they even do anything even if you had a name change it is because people are using these processes as a means to escape liabilities whereby almost infinite possibilities exist to deal with the issue of taxation warrants all these ta child support in the first place rather than dragging along all that burden trash into another process and then create another reality whereby they realize oh you're trying to use this as an excuse don't worry we'll create something for you self-responsibility is important education itself is the process all these processes that people are going to are not the process education is because if you're not educated you will never be able to enforce any other process. And if you try your best to do so, you will be screwing it up for yourself and everyone else to come in the future. And it subsequently defeats the significance and the intent of that process that you're trying to do in the first place. And the new people coming in after you will be completely ignorant of what you have done. It's making it worse for them. And chances are, even you don't even know the consequence of what you're doing. I'm here to show that to you. I'm here to tell you to slow down. Don't believe the hype train. Certain processes work. But when people feed it to you unequivocally like it's the end all meet all. 
and you think you can avoid it or abate some type of liability by doing something else outside of the situation itself. For instance, you have a court case or they say you owe some tax or you owe child support and someone is telling you, oh, go get the passport as a national. It's going to discharge all of that. They are lying to you. Those are isolated circumstances that you're dragging and you're now homogenizing into something different. Now they have to create more and thicker barriers that should not have even existed in the first place. And they are auditing all these applications way harder because of someone's stupidity. Stupidity is a powerful influence. This is not a downplay on stupidity. It is so powerful that it will change the ebbs and flow of things. Why? Because someone just wanted to sound good, take your cash, and at the end, even you didn't get the result you want. But guess what you did? You fucked it up. For yourself and everyone. So now you go back to saying, how do I fix this tax issue? How do I fix this child support? Well, that's because you should have dealt with that first. Self-responsibility is very important. This is a truth that a lot of people aren't telling you, but someone needs to reveal to you and then show you the language of the public law that has resulted from people's naivety. And the intent to take advantage of some quick hype train. People are making it harder for themselves and others by trying to avoid self-responsibility. See, the mind only has one task. The mind is only occupied with one thing at every moment, whether you're awake or you're asleep. And that very simple task is thought. The mind only has the simple task of thought, it thinks, day in, day out. If you screw around and allow someone to enter your thoughts and feed you something based on instant gratification without showing you the dynamics of how it works or why it works and the possible repercussion and be real, at that moment, they might be real with you and tell you what you're doing is delusional, but look, here's a solution. And it might not sound good to you because you want to hear what you want to hear, but nonetheless, it's saving you from future problems and it's preventing others. And in fact, that solution that they're giving to you by telling you, hey, don't do this, is actually where your remedy is. Don't fall for the hype train. You really want to get solution or remedy? Then be willing to comprehend all the totality of dynamics involved the good and the bad the ebbs and flow of it this world exists in duality all the time if you think you're going to take some remedy and there's no duality involved when it comes to and the duality is usually self-responsibility which a lot of people perceive to, the, to be the hard part of the bad part the sweet and good part is the remedy but the remedy would not reveal itself unless self-responsibility precedes it. A lot of people try to attempt self-responsibility in an attempt of seeking remedy. Your mind is your greatest asset. You have to take the responsibility of protecting it by nurturing it with proper information. You'd be surprised by how quick people are willing to not protect their minds by acquiring proper information just because they heard someone say something that sounds cool that they themselves don't even know anything about. There are only maybe a less than a handful of people out here that actually know what they're talking about. Everyone else is just merely regurgitating it. Whether it's in social media posts or whatever it is that they're doing, they are merely regurgitating something they do not know. And you are just falling in line with it and you are creating rest to the Carters one way or another against yourself and everyone else. Misinformation has been so rampant to the point where on one hand, if they don't feed you sweet, buttery, sugary talk that motivates you temporarily and dies out 
and doesn't afford you any remedy in any way. They will, on the other hand, discourage you and tell you the system is fixed. There's no justice in the system. On the first hand, where they feed you something sweet, instead of you stopping for a moment, cross-referencing it, and making sure they know what in the world they're talking about, you don't do that. On the other hand, where they're deterring you, telling you, this stuff doesn't work, that stuff doesn't work. It's probably because they themselves have failed. And in them failing, you probably should figure out where they went wrong. And the substance behind how they went wrong. And now just because they went wrong, they're trying to deter you from doing it. Because the system is so-called supposedly fixed, should that not be the main motivating factor for you to actually learn the law behind how things work, for you to learn the dynamics, the common sense beyond what's written on pen and paper, what's written actually written in between the line? This is one of those. This is what ends up if you don't use your mind. The only thing the mind is occupied with, that thought, that one simple thing, that is the most consistent in the mind at any given moment, if you don't use it, this is what it ends. They create stipulations to screw people over. If the secretary receives certification by the Commissioner of Internal Revenue that an individual has, and you don't even necessarily have to directly owe the IRS, it can be a third party using them as a collector. So now you're screwed. It can be a student loan. It can be a child support. It can be a, a, a refinanced vehicle. It can be a refinanced mortgage. Think of it. It can be given to the IRS. Then an individual has a seriously delinquent tax debt. The secretary shall transmit such certification to the secretary of state. When you do the passport, what agency of the United States deal with those passports? as its liaison, the Secretary of State, for action with respect to denial, revocation, or limitation of a passport pursuant to Section 3210 of the FAST Act. Seriously delinquent tax debt. In general, for purpose of this section, the term seriously delinquent tax debt, in quotes, means an unpaid, legally enforceable federal tax liability of an individual. You'd be surprised to find out that all these schools, colleges, mortgage contracts, refinancing of vehicles, child support loans, all of them are homogenized under federal tax liability according to IRS verbiage. All you have to do is start here, 26 U.S.C. 7345, and it would lead you through that yellow brick road. It would tell you word for word. I will be doing you a dissatisfaction of due diligence. I will be doing you an injustice by spoon-fitting it to you. But the least that I owe to you is to show you the beginning point and to show you most importantly beyond the beginning point that it doesn't even have to get to this beginning point if a lot of people have done their due diligence beyond jumping on the bandwagon if this had happened then something else is happening right now that people are doing that will cause them to create another public law to bar people from certain remedies and processes that they think they're trying to reach why? Because people omit the first and the most important process, which is education. People need to stop lying to themselves about how this world works. Whatever it is you're trying to do as a loophole, as a way out, as a quick gratification, just to feel like you just did something or because someone tell you, hey, look, do something over here and it would apply to something on this side without you taking self-responsibility and directly facing that thing that you're dealing with rather than trying to do something on the side, you are screwing yourself and everyone else over. And this is one of them. So basically they go through the general requirement of how to collect tax. 
based on the stipulation of IRS, which is they have to assess they have to assess the value of it like they will assess a property tax. And then the total assessment must be greater than 50k. And the stipulation is they have to give you a notice of lien pursuant to section 6323 and 6320 when it comes to their collection attempt. And then a levy. A lien is a temporary taking of a property. A levy is a permanent taking of a property. Exceptions. Meaning the only way that this debt that's more than 50k will not prevent you from getting a passport no matter what type of passport or will not prevent the revocation so you say you've gotten that non-citizen national right okay they can revoke it they can limit certain stipulation that's put into that scannable bar that shows all that stuff that you sent along with the application or they can deny it completely if you're now nearly applying for it. If you don't know where you're coming from, you will not know where you're going. And if you don't know where you're going, you will be lost in the sauce. Exceptions. Such terms shall not include a debt that is being paid in a timely manner pursuant to an agreement to which the individual is party under section 615 or 7122. In other words, they're telling you now you have to come back and deal with it like you originally ought to have done so before going somewhere else. They are dragging you back. Some of you who has played Mortal Kombat, you're probably familiar with that character Scorpion. When it pulls that chain, drags you, tell you to get over here. That's what they're doing with this. You're not going anywhere. You're not doing anything. You're not changing any status under anything because that's considered tax evasion. You might not think it's tax evasion because, oh, it's just child support. It's just student loan. All that. The word loan and tax are synonymous under any given circumstance. The word interest and tax are synonymous under any given circumstance. And those loans aka tax can be accrued on top of one another meaning they can add interest on top of a loan and then it gives you the stipulation of how they enforce it in details here so the only reason why this existed the only reason why they created this if you read the intent of legislature see this is a whole 491 page but that specific part is the most important to people trying to use the passport process to avoid one thing or the other. You'd be surprised by how many people actually intend to use passport process as a way to dismiss some court case or to get rid of some loan. That is not the intent of changing the status of that under the auspice of the United States through the Secretary of State. That is not the original intent of why those instructions in DS-11 were created. And when you begin to use the intent the wrong way, they clamp down. Coincidentally enough, it was in fact around 2014, 2015, that the initial first wave of people trying to do the whole silver bullet, state citizen stuff, and then they try to then they found out another method that's a little bit different from silver bullet it was around the same time period and a lot of people who had a lot of tax liability were trying to use it as a way to get out one of the most common thing you would also find now is when you apply for passport they'll tell you if you have child support warrants tax all this they're not going to give it to you part of that source is right here the least you cannot say is that someone has not told you the reference as to how you can fix it or at least as to why they're doing what they're doing and most importantly self-responsibility and lack thereof causes things like this and many many more process is taking place right now as I speak as you listen to this 
whether it's going to be in the future you're listening to this or whether it's going to be around the same year this video is uploaded that you're listening to this there's something going on right now that someone is doing that a group of people are doing that will cause them to create more public law to clamp down know what you're doing before you do it and when you do it don't use it as an excuse to not take self-responsibility take self-responsibility face your issues trying to run it's like people trying to do all these SPC stuff hold harmless agreement do you not know when you get all those signatures for bond that you send it to all these places do you not people don't know what hold harmless agreement mean hold harmless is an insurance policy for whoever it is that you're giving it to you are voluntarily waiving your right to hold them liable by getting all these people to sign all these bonds and you're sending it to them stop and think before you do these things you are completely accomplishing the opposite of what you think you're doing why because somebody has sold it to you it sounds good it feels good it sounds smart but there's no substance or significance to it to those seeking some quick self-gratifying things the only thing that will save you is competence it has been like that since the ancient time and it will never ever change take care and best of luck hey i'm inviting you to join my patreon if you haven't already over there we speak about things that we don't speak of on youtube speak about trust related matters and other subtle details regarding the property and asset protection speak about financial related matters a lot of things that people seek and can't quite put their hands on or get a better understanding of we speak about child support privacy things of spiritual nature the subtle arts of suing and whatnot discharge and much more take a look at it